Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of That's All Funny. Uh, episode number 592. Oh shit, I still got people in the way. Thank you my Patreon subscribers. Uh, y'all are great. All of y'all. Why, why is... Wait, where is it? Where am I... What am I missing? Oh, here I am. Okay. Um, yeah, no, thank y'all for... <laughs> What's up? Another day, just here chilling. Uh, slept late. It was kind of rainy. I wanted to go for a quote 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 unquote jog uh like i did yesterday but it was rainy so i was like ew i don't want to and there's excuse but so i slept all day again um but yeah otherwise just here chilling uh played some minecraft with my niece played some roblox with her <laughs> i don't really like roblox but we had a lot of fun we were doing like this game where you uh style your character like they give you a theme and it's like a fashion uh what is it a fashion show and they give you a theme and you have to dress your character uh and then everybody votes at the end once you go down the runway and then you slay as they say the kids and um it was fun you know as far as playing it on the xbox and getting used to the ui it was fun just hanging out with her and playing roblox even though i think roblox is a poor man's game uh (laughs) <laughs> they have people like in third world countries with devices that play Roblox, but it was fun to, you know, like I said, uh, just hang out. But otherwise, yeah, just here chilling. Uh, we can look at the news. Uh, really, I haven't been doing anything other than chilling. Uh, let's see the news here. Doo-doo-doo-doo. Here we go. Uh, Dan Snyder <laughs> sues quiet on the set producers for defamation, calls docuseries a hit job. So. I remember when this quiet on the set stuff was coming on and, you know, they were saying, oh, uh, Dan Snyder is doing uh, quiet on the set, the dark side of kids TV. And he's one of the biggest like uh, accuser or people being accused of on there because, you know, he had a lot of hit shows like iCarly, all that. A lot of shows like I grew up with. Right. Uh, The Amanda show. And <laughs> I mean, you look back now at like those shows and the shit they did, like a lot of feet stuff, a lot of weird stuff, like with girls and boys and stuff. And, you know, as a kid back then, you're laughing at it. You're like, oh, look, that girl has to put her fo- foot in a bunch of uh, milk or she has to, you know, be in a pond full of uh, pudding or something, you know, and squish around in it. But now as an adult, you're like, oh, that's like some fetish shit. Like, you know, like that shit, like I can get off on now, like as an adult, you know. So I can imagine only how an older dude would have seen that towards kids and kind of demanding it from them to do. You know what I mean? Um, Whatever. uh, uh, Maps dream, you know. Uh, But yeah, this Dan Snyder is one of the biggest being accused of it, especially because of how you know, successful he was on Nickelodeon. And then also, I, this isn't anything new to me because I read um, Jeanette McCurdy's book, um, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And she talks a lot of shit about not specifically Dan Snyder. She didn't say his name, but she calls him, she has a name for him, like the producer or the director, you know? And we all know it's him. Like, I don't know why that's not more prevalent because she talks a lot about what he would tell her to do and stuff she wasn't comfortable with like having her kiss like this other boy when they were young and they hadn't kissed anyone yet or she hadn't kissed anyone and she wasn't comfortable with it with it but it was part of the show or how she he would invite her out you know like i don't know it's not comfortable she wasn't comfortable you know and then all the other shit that was going down with her and her mom uh and her mom being a piece of shit treating her terribly trying to live through her life vicariously while her mom's also going with uh fighting cancer and she's fighting um what is it like anorexia where she doesn't want to eat because um she doesn't feel thin right and then she's growing up too so there's a lot a lot of layers there with her book that i whenever i read it or heard it on audiobook i have a book there uh i already knew about dan snyder (laughs) <laughs> and looked into him and then this just like makes it even more uh obvious and then now that he's suing for defamation after i think he came out with an apology it's kind of weird uh but you know he could do whatever he wants um 
just like any uh, Weinstein type, Harvey Weinstein type person, I'm sure he's like, I'm, you're going to be a star. You just got to, you know, do these weird sexual innuendo things. Or I'm going to put slime all over you or I'm going to have you squish a pudding in between your toes or put spaghetti in your mouth till you fucking gag on it. I don't know. That's <laughs> what can you do? Like, it's a sick. It was a sick world back then. It's a sick world still now. So, oh, well, at least people are more like observant to it you know like more people have woken up as they say and see past the uh, lines of code into the matrix but uh that's funny for him that he's uh suing for defamation so it makes him seem even more guilty but i'm sure he has enough money and enough lawyers to win it and um i don't know we'll see what happens uh moving on here brian cox slams the bible as one of the worst books ever stupid people believe it I don't know who Brian Cox is. Who is this? Uh, an interview on the Starting Line podcast. Oh, Succession star Brian Cox. Okay, so he's an actor from the show Succession. And he's saying that the Bible is stupid and why do people believe it? And, you know, I'm not disagreeing. Like, <sighs> I'm not disagreeing that the Bible isn't a... Uh, a work of fact I, I i do feel that it is like more fiction than anything especially that it's a king james version maybe the bible before that um was more factual but obviously when king james got a hold of the bible and got it translated he did so for the sake of people being able to read it better and then for the sake of the stories being more entertaining so obviously it was edited <laughs> and probably very much so i'm sure there's some truth in the bible like specks of it or whatever but do i think the bible is something you should fucking read and and like like it lets you allow you to do things that are wrong or give you excuses on why you should do stuff no um if it helps motivate you in a positive way and brings you success in your life without hurting other people totally go for it but i don't think it's something we should be making laws over you know like like official government laws of course there's like good stuff in the bible um you know that we can follow like the ten commandments that's a pretty good uh, <laughs> was that's a pretty good foundation right you know and these stories are they're okay you know but I mean, come on, like the Noah's Ark, like two of every animal. There's no way that shit could have, like some of it could have been real. Maybe there was a great flood, but I don't think a, a ark could have held two of every animal and then this and that. And then, I don't know. Of course, there's just like crazy shit in there. You know what I mean? So I don't think it's anything to base like government laws off of, especially like uh, thou shalt not lie or thou shalt not uh covet thy neighbor's wife like i think we all covet our neighbor's wife uh a lot you know what i mean so uh there's a lot of things that the bible is good for in a positive way but i don't think it's anything people should believe like oh this happened this is like this should be in uh the true or the section of the library where it's fact or a science book or like you know what i mean no it's it's a great story it, it's good words to live by but i don't think it's anything <clears throat> that, not like a true story documentary type thing and i always go i don't think jesus was black i think he was very tan uh i think he was what do you call it mesopotamian and uh he's very uh indian looking you know what i mean because they're obviously from jerusalem and all that shit so he must have been tan. He couldn't be this white boy with pink lips, all beautiful and shit with abs or whatever the fuck they say Jesus looks like. But yeah, uh, re you know, as long as the Bible helps you, um, go for it, read it, uh, fucking live with it, believe it if it helps you um, get through life. But if it helps you hurt others, just stick to Buddhism. <laughs> Buddhism's like the better way to go, I, I think, you know. But I'll just believe whatever I want to believe, and as you do too. So whatever. Uh, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a theologist. I'm just a fat piece of shit that's still learning how to fall. Continuing on here, um, speaking of falling, 
the deepest blue hole in the world is discovered. Scientists still haven't found the bottom. And pictured here is Belize's great blue hole, probably the most recognizable blue hole. So uh, Belize's great blue hole is a newly discovered blue hole off the coast of Mexico. Oh, no, that's the most recognizable one. The newly discovered blue hole off the coast of Mexico is even deeper. Uh, the formation is the Tamja Blue Hole in Mexico's Camtumo Bay and is so far has been measured to 1,378 feet deep or 420 meters below sea level. <laughs> 420. <laughs> blue holes are huge underwater sinkholes that appear on the seafloor when the limestone bedrock collapses. Some of the most famous blue holes, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, there's just like a level here of, so it's like the sea floor and then it goes even further down below the sea floor, below the sea level or something or no, no, that's the seabed and it goes down. I don't know. Um, I guess that's pretty deep. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm scared of the ocean, dude. Like, I feel like we don't know what's down there, you know, like with Atlantis and all that shit or whatever you want to believe in the Bible. Well, nah, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the ocean's pretty fucking scary. And yeah, we have space and that's infinite, but I feel like we could reach the bottom of the ocean and I don't think we'll like what we find down there. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know, especially with um, people with that whole uh, ocean gate submarine bullshit. I don't think... Uh, your amateur person is going to find out soon what's down there. But if you want to send like a little camera and just, you know, squeegee it down there, I wouldn't want to know what we find in the darkness of, uh, fucking the, the ocean, because I feel like it's easier. Like in space, everything kind of dies or it's cold or whatever. Like we could see what's coming from the ocean. It's like really dark pure darkness there's so much pressure that whatever can survive down there i'm afraid of you know i feel like it'd be easier to survive in space than it would be to survive deep underwater i don't know that's just me i don't know the science to it i'm not a, <laughs> a doctor a theologist i just hate uh existing but lastly here on the news uh jerry seinfeld slams friends brings back seinfeld characters in new movie promo so seinfeld has kind of been back in the the i don't know the swing of things because of uh his movie that's coming out uh called unfrosted where it's about pop the making of pop tarts or something and i don't know how this is going to go down because i mean pop tarts are all right right they're like as a kid they were like the go-to snack i think besides like lunchables and stuff like that now as an adult Pop tarts, man, those are like the kind of things uh, where it's not worth the wait. You know, you put it in the toaster and you're waiting for it to toast and then you get it out and it's not really like toasted properly or if it's too hot and some of it's broken and they're just they're not worth the wait anymore as an adult for how what they taste like. I, I'd rather eat like, I don't know, a fucking... So, something else i think they're too expensive too for how cheaply made they are and so fragile i'd rather eat like a peanut butter cracker or something something with peanut butter or ice cream i'm, I'm actually might eat some ice cream right now that i think about it i could go for some i think i have some butter pecan ice cream left over but uh yeah as an adult they aren't really my go-to oh you know what's good too like a bowl of cereal like cinnamon toast crutch or something yeah i'd rather if i want something sweet that sounds fucking good i might buy some cereal uh, when I go to the store again, but he's just coming back and saying how comedy, like people are getting canceled for it. It doesn't make sense because of the shows he's done, uh, back when he doesn't think he can get away with it now, obviously. And I mean, he's not wrong, but Seinfeld, I mean, he, he grew up, his, his humor is so different and not that it's not funny. What's wrong with that? What's up with that? No, nah. I think he's funny. And I like Seinfeld, but I just feel like now he he's so cocky, like he he thinks he's like a comedy god. And um, not that he's not one of the the you know most successful that have done it. Again, it's subjective. The idea of if you like him or not, as far as comedy goes, he is very successful. 
with you know his show and all that that went however many seasons and he ended it he didn't get it canceled as he says you know um but now everything the world's so different now like he's not funny anymore when you have like edgier comics or more absurd things to be observant about you know it, it the world's just not i don't know it, it's it's different now like you know he's he's maybe he's 90s funny you know that's 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 fine you know we could all use a little nostalgia with humor every now and then but for him to kind of judge the base of humor now and what it is now and how he thinks what's funny again it's subjective like people are different now audiences are different now they laugh at different things now especially post 9 11 nah, i don't know people are just different you know uh they don't laugh at the wacky things that used to happen back then and when timing was kind of everything it's all about i don't know i don't know what it is now that make people laugh you know like abs absurdity is what makes people laugh like randomness is what makes people laugh uh the shit that they don't, they don't see coming i feel like is is the best thing to go um but what do i know oh <laughs> this isn't a humor podcast is it no, i don't know all i know is um where's the music i was trying to cue up that uh hold on all i know is that that's that's all funny guys no i want to thank you for listening to the podcast uh that's all funny today when we're podcasting we'll just talk about what's all that uh that's okay favorite we talk about wrestling uh it's funny uh it's i mean we have fun it's all about wrestling check that out that's all okay fave anywhere podcasts are available if you want to see video versions of this and that check out the youtube channel youtube.com slash at lorenzo ariola i uh, got video versions of this that i do a live show with the wonderful mint salad called tits and areolas where we talk about a movie we watched play a little game it's fun just put out a clips episode where you can kind of see a compilation of the last 38 uh, episodes we've done and it was a lot of it's a lot of fun she's just she's great check down the youtube channel if you want to help support the podcast check out the patreon patreon.com slash lorenzo Ariola. five dollars a month gets you everything uh, early episodes bonus episodes deleted episodes extra stuff like that um if you want to follow me on socials check me out on instagram and twitter at lorenzo Ariola. you hit me up on message for t-shirts merch uh, merch like t-shirts print stickers or you want to push some great art from a great artist the guy who does all the art for the show at retro horror inc on twitter and instagram uh so check him out uh i want to thank everyone for liking subscribing thank you my patreon members uh keep sharing like subscribing everything like that helps take care stay safe bye <laughs>